Uh, very shortly, I'm going to be talking to my first guest of the day, the one, the only, Natalie Imbruglia. She's back in the world with new music, telly success. If you've got a question, comment, or query for Natalie, you know what to do. You simply text us, 8722, start that text with the word virgin. And to introduce Natalie, what better way than a live session she did here at uh, Virgin, Stop the Tower, uh, on the Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky. Uh, this is a live version of Torn and a thing of beauty it is. I'll be chatting to the woman herself after this. Ah, oh, she sings, she speaks. Good morning, Natalie and Brulia. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, that is such a... I mean, that was... It sounds great. So, oh, so good. So nice to do it acoustically like that. Yeah. And I still love singing it. And w- which is great because you have I'm to. I'm going to be for a while still. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it. But no, because I, I was saying, because you, you were on the chat show last night and I was saying it, that is still one of the top selling UK singles of all time. It's incredible. Yeah. But it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful song and Phil Thornalley, I think, did an amazing job on the production of it. And it's just, some songs just stand the test of time and I'm blessed to have got the chance to sing that one. So I'm yeah. just grateful. Um, uh, and also, I mean, it, like it's best selling single, but that, the, the clip of you singing that has got nearly two million hits on the Virgin. That's crazy. YouTube. Well, like we don't get two million hits, so that's really? yeah, that's incredible. That's thank a, you, everybody. You're for the way support. up there. You're way up there, lady. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's old music. Old music, schmold music. Uh, new music from Natalie and Brulia. First yeah. in, is it, I mean, we're saying ten years. Yeah, I'm not sure of the timeline, but it's about ten years. About yeah, yeah, 10 yeah, years. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this album, Firebird, the yeah. new album, which is still out. Uh, Nashville, you were saying it went. To, so when you got, like, when you go to Nashville, like, do you just do you just see who's around, or do you arrange? Do you like do you, you make get your appointments people to talk to those people? So basically, there's a wonderful woman called Alicia Pruitt. So my management spoke to her, and she lined up a bunch of writers for me. And my managers were like, "Look, she's got writer's block. She's a bit nervous." It was the whole thing, and so everybody was lovely. So any bad songs that I feel like happened was not their fault it's more to do with i was so nervous at the beginning i just was like oh yeah we'll just say that and just kind of going along with whatever and not it took a while but i think if you're that's the whole thing it's a discipline so if you're doing it every day and you're doing two it's 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 like speed dating but what's weird is when you listen to the album it doesn't sound tentative in any way it sounds like you went into it with things to say that's very true i think after i had my son a lot of things fell into place. And in retrospect, I think a lot of my writer's block might have been tied to the fact that I didn't feel like that was all in place and I was, you know, trying to fix myself after my divorce. And then suddenly you just get to an age and then, you know, having Max. And suddenly I was just like, I'm fine. There's nothing to fix, which is what Nothing Missing's about. Yeah, but also I think... What's it, what I like about the songs is they're about kind of, you know, the things that songs are about. Heartbreak and falling in love and missing people. Da, da, da. But they have that wisdom of age. It's yeah. stuff you've learnt. Mm. And I think it shows in my voice <laughs> as well. Uh, yeah, songwriting's more fun now. And I think uh, there's been a lot of life lived in between. So whilst I had that writer's book, a lot of I've been through a lot. And I did have a lot to say. And I think, you know, I was kind of angry about a lot of things. I mean, this industry can be relentless. And I think I've been a victim of the rejection of the industry and ups and downs. And But, you know, it's also good for you. I think, you know, it's the people that kind of just well, it's keep life. going up and up and up and up and up. Yeah, it's life, isn't it? It's life. Life, it, life is relentless. Yeah. <laughs> and you just get more comfortable with where you're at. So I'm really proud of this album. I did some incredible collaborations on it. Uh, Romeo Stoddard from The Magic Numbers, Katie Tunstall, Luke Fitton, we wrote a lot of songs on there. So many amazing writers and it's just, it's kind of like a phoenix out of the ashes album for me. It's just like things I've overcome and... Yeah, and that thing of, you know, being, you know, you get this beauty parade of people to come in and work with you. Like, are there good dates and bad dates? Is it like kind of songwriting Tinder? Is it like... You know, some dumb. You, this is just ba- it, it's this exactly is, like this that. This is awkward. And you know, you have some friends that say they just. I've had friends say they go on these dates, and if they don't like the person, they just go. I'm just going to the bathroom, and they leave. <laughs> you can't really do that in a songwriting session. So I've always said, you know, if the it's an energy thing. If it's the dynamics not there, it's a really quite a long day. Yeah, 
But are you, are you now at a point where you say, uh, shall we uh, shall we just stop this? Or? I, I say, let's just start something new. I'm feeling a bit stuck. Let's just start a new idea. And I think you learn that it's okay to do that. I think yeah. at the beginning, you're just kind of trying to keep everyone happy and going along with ideas that are just not anything you would sing about. Yeah. Or and, say. And you're one of the people you, because, you, you, you know, I know you had trouble writing, so you're that. But you, 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 it seems like you don't miss performing. You decide, right, I'm not going to do that for a while. And da, da, da. But now you are back. You're, you're doing a, a 25 year anniversary tour. I don't think it's that. I think I'm not ambitious in that way that I need to keep on, on, on. And some people are different. Like, I'm a little bit of an isolate. So I just go through periods where, you know, it can be hard getting out of bed some mornings. So I think there's just, I just let things happen naturally and organically. But I've made a promise to myself because it's, you know, you just build up this momentum and then there's three years and it's like starting again. So it's like my 100th comeback, you know. <laughs> so I think this time I've decided that's it. I'm going to stay on it. I'm in this, I'm in flow and I just want to keep going. And I love performing. That's my favourite bit. I love going on tour. Well, it was lovely to see you perform on the show last night because you could really see, you know, I'd forgotten the way you perform. You've great energy on Arms stage. Arms and legs, right? Yeah. Just flailing around everywhere. <laughs> I sing with my legs. I can't sing sitting down i don't know how people do it i can't sing sitting down yes i can't see a stool in your set no <laughs> no uh listen let's uh, let's listen to uh the current single um uh, nothing missing this you wrote with katie tunstall i did katie tunstall and my riot my riot actually produced this album uh shout out to them and we had a great time writing it and anything you want to tell us about nothing missing nothing missing i katie came to my house in oxford and i said look i really need to express this feeling I'm having, I've realised there's nothing missing. I've spent 10 years trying to fix myself and thinking something's wrong with me. After my divorce, you know, road less travelled, having my son on my own, I was like, there's nothing missing, I'm totally fine. So that's what it's about. All right, here it is, and very fine it is. Hey, Natalie and Brulia, nothing missing. That is off the album Firebird, which is out now. And the tour dates you mentioned, you can find them on natalieandbrulia, all one word, dot com. Uh, that's later in the year, right? That's October. October. Yep. Celebrating 25 years of my first album, Left of the Middle. So will you just play that first album or will you A dot mix it? of that album, yeah. a little bit of everything and obviously a lot from Firebird as well. Yeah, so. go on. Yeah. yeah, you've written them now. <laughs> you, you know them now. You might as well play them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Got to talk about Mars Singer. Um, uh, did you... I mean, how... So presumably they just... They go through the, the you know, the phone book of famous singers and they just bring everyone. Uh, did you hesitate or did you kind of think, yeah, why not? I think I'd been asked before and I'd said no. And then I was talking to Nikki, my TV plugger, and she's like, oh, you know, I know you don't want to do this, but I just wanted to talk to you about it again. And I was like, do you know, I think maybe I might consider doing that. And it's, I think it's becoming a mum. It just appealed to me a lot more. And I just, I think I've got more of a sense of humour and I thought it'd be fun for him to see me be a giant panda. <laughs> Why and of course, not? For you, lovely, because you won. But it must have been weird for, you know, like people like Will Young and who was, there was someone else really good. Was it Heather Small or somebody like that? I can't remember who it was. Well, that's the fear, isn't it? You just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's a singing show, but I don't think it's necessarily the best singer wins. I mean, we had we had Charlotte Church. I mean, that girl can sing. Yes, because you must be thinking, uh, OK, that mushroom <clears throat> has gone full opera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. she's the only person that I had an inkling it was her. Was that the but only they, one you guessed? Yeah, they go to great lengths. And I know Pat Cash, I know Jamie Winston. These are friends of mine, and I had no idea. I mean, he was the bagpipe. He was standing right next to me. It's just crazy. But what you don't realise is the physical challenge of not being able to see, possibly falling off the stage or off the set. It's... The whole thing became about not sounding out of breath, yeah. you know, so... And also, it's physically demanding, because like, apparently they're very long records because of the, the, yeah. the setups, you know, because the production values are gorgeous. Everything looks beautiful. It's stunning. But that takes time. It takes time. <laughs> so you're just standing around in a panda suit the whole I time. I ate everything in that dressing room. I just kept restocking <laughs> the snacks, because you know what? You sweat so much in that outfit, suddenly... I could eat ten Twix bars and I'd be fine. So okay, the thing I want to know because I always because the, the the bit when they, you know going take it off, 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 take it
taking it off. And and you kind of think, okay, that person has to be a sweaty, hideous mess in there. So how long is is the repair job before you turn around? They do break. They do a little break. <laughs> you get a little zhuzh. And then you have to gently resting. Thing is, you put the thing back on. So if your hair's in your face, you've got pores. So you can't actually... <laughs> So I was like, you know, trying to get my hair out of my face. It's crazy. No, it's like it, I, I, when people turn around, it's like the way people wake up in films. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I, I, I'm fully made up. My hair is fine. <laughs> really? Because I've been in Halloween costumes. So I was much. so grateful they did that, though, because you don't want to see what I look, <laughs> what I really looked like. No, that would be really humiliating. <laughs> if, particularly if you're out week one. <laughs> and you're, you're sort of looking hideous. You sweat. It's full body sweat. Uh, yeah. Yes, we talked about this on the on the TV show, but then it got cut out. Uh, and a lot of people want to uh, hear about this. Neighbors. Neighbors. Everybody uh, good <laughs> Poor old neighbours. Uh, so you've got kind of involved in the campaign to save neighbours. Well, look, I, I posted about the petition. I was asked about it. And the truth is, I do think it's really sad because it's... It's, the, it's where I started. It's the thing that got me to the UK. And it's just part of the fabric of being over here. I mean, I don't know about in Australia anymore. I don't know about the rest of the world. But I know for here, it just doesn't seem right that neighbours would stop. Yes, except it is kind of like, uh, I don't know what, because it, 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 you feel like it's going on in an alternate... Don't you want to see my boyfriend Brad get bitten by a shark and <laughs> shot and stabbed in the one week? I mean, come on. Your son is still <laughs> in it though, isn't he? Yeah, he's really good looking too. Well, of course. Look at the gene. <laughs> Look at the gene pool. <laughs> We've become social media buddies, which is quite funny. We've never met. Oh. I mean, in life. But um, but yeah, I thought you know we've got to keep my son going. We've got to keep him on air. So no, and it's interesting because the you know when people knew you were coming on the TV show and coming on here, I got lots of tweets about it and because the people who care really care, <laughs> like they they are passionate yeah. about it. It's like yeah. a, it's going to be a... When is it supposed to end? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, if they get enough... They've got a lot of names in that petition. I'm not sure where the numbers are at at the moment, but... And would... If I think they, it's worth fighting for. I think it's a fun game. Let's just see if we can pull it off. And if it is ending and they wanted to do some amazing star-studded, you know, everyone comes 100%, back... 100% I would do it. Excellent. That's all we want I would to do it. Okay. But only if Brad's there. Okay. Brad has to be there, my boyfriend. Brad My husband, there. sorry. Yeah. What does Brad look like now? I don't know, actually. That's a good you, question. You I wonder not... if his hair's still long. <laughs> I'm guessing not. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's still on his head. <laughs> Google him. Let's, let's Google him. <laughs> oh, now, it's as, if, it's as if we planned this, talking about uh, neighbours. We're going to play uh, Don't Dream It's Over. Uh, but I'm afraid uh, it is over. We're releasing you back into the wild. Uh, panda mask off. You, you look beautiful. You I look, survived. You look beautiful today. Oh, bless you. Uh, congratulations on the album and good Thank luck. With the, the tour dates. Lovely to see you Thanks again. Natalie and Bruley, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you again. <laughs>